I am gonna be getting into the hotel space and I've ragged on hotels so many times on my channel, not because I hate the concept of a hotel, it's because I think most hotels are boring. If you can make $2,000 more a month yeah. profit, right. you've increased the value of this half a million dollars. So now what you've done is instead of buying a business, you bought a mistake. It's currently 5 a.m. I am at the airport because I am flying to San Diego to look at a hotel tomorrow. Actually, no. Flying to LA because all the flights to San Diego were awful. Getting a rental car and then driving to San Diego tomorrow because I'm buying a hotel or thinking about buying a hotel. And I'm always faced with this incredibly difficult decision when I have a 5 a.m. flight of do I drink coffee before the flight and fight through the flight or do I skip the coffee feel horrible until the actual flight and then sleep on the flight. And what I always end up doing is getting the coffee and sleeping on the flight anyway. Which is probably what I'll do right now. So let's go buy a hotel. hours later <clears throat> and I have finally arrived to Los Angeles the city of angels or as my people would call it Los Angeles el ciudad de angeles first we're gonna take a little trip to my house that I Airbnb and check on things a bit and I'm scared of what I'm gonna find Imagine you have a child and you raise this child right. You instill the best principles in them and you look after them. It gets to the point where you send them off to college. You're sad, but it's time. And then they come to visit after their first semester. They look tired. They're broken. That's kind of what it's like to check on your Airbnb <laughs> in the simplest way possible. Let's go see the damage. Okay, uncovering some interesting things as I walk up to the house. Like these random command strips right here. Why? Why are there command strips on my house? It really makes no sense. Here we are. Honestly, it looks pretty good in here. It's not bad. It smells a little weird, and I don't know why, but I'm not mad about it. The only thing that's wrong is that is not a coffee table. That is meant to be a side table right here. And for whatever reason, the cleaner thought it would look better as a coffee, as a tiny coffee table. Okay, that's trash. And all that should have been wiped off. Ugh. It's a little gross looking. Let's talk about why I'm going to the dark side and moving into more of the hotel space versus staying in the short-term rental side of things. There are a few interesting things with the short-term rental thing. I think it's a really great place for investors to start if you want high cash flow. And I did a whole talk last week that talked about the four levers of real estate and why single family residences, especially when they're short-term rentals, make amazing investments over the course of that 30-year investment. And that's really good. But if you want more than that and you're like, I wanna be the monopoly man, I wanna be a multi, multi, multi millionaire in the real estate space, then you need to start dipping your toes in the commercial space. And I'll tell you why in a second. But I wanna explain sort of the problems that come along with short-term rentals. One, when you buy a short-term rental, assuming that you're self-managing it, you're assembling a team. You're assembling a cleaner, landscaper, pest control, lawn maintenance, pool maintenance, and then you've got to manage that team. So when you buy a short-term rental, while most of it is automated, you're still kind of buying a miniature job. And then when you buy a second property, let's say it's in a different city, like me, I've got properties literally in California, Arizona, Tennessee, Wisconsin, Texas, everywhere, you have to build out all these satellite teams all over the country. So while I have teams and efficiencies built into my operations, my entire portfolio is still a bit disparate. It could be more efficient if a bit more consolidated. So basically as a short-term rental host that owns a ton of houses, I think I can speak from experience and tell you that single family residences and owning Airbnbs, you start to see diminishing returns as you buy more properties. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just pointing out that's one of the difficulties with scaling and buying, especially if you're doing the whole self-management thing. Two. The second thing about short-term rentals that I don't love is that you can't sell a short-term rental as a business. Let me explain. Big misconception I see from a lot of naive investors out there is they'll buy this house for, let's say, 
$350,000. And because it grosses $100,000 on Airbnb and is super, super profitable, even though the market rate on that property is $350,000, that owner thinks, hmm, it makes $100,000 a year, so I think I wanna sell it for $500,000. And you know what? In 2020 and 2021, people were doing that and they were buying those houses as businesses. And I think that's the dumbest thing that anyone can ever do. I will never pay a dollar over market value because how well that specific short-term rental has done in the past. I think short-term rentals are way too volatile, way too risky to be paying over market value. That's my opinion. It just doesn't work that way. And like I said, super risky because what happens if that city outlaws or bans short-term rentals? Now you have this house that you bought for way more than it's actually worth. Your mortgage on it's probably really, really high and you don't have the exit strategy. You can't rent it long-term because you'll probably bleed money doing that. And you can't really sell it without taking a loss. So now what you've done is instead of buying a business, you bought a mistake. Now this does start to change at the portfolio level. And if you're trying to sell 10, 20, 30, 40 homes, at that point, if that portfolio is stabilized and has been functioning for many, many years, I think you could argue it's a business. And at that point, I do think you start entering the commercial real estate side of things, which I'll break down next. When you buy a hotel or a motel, let's say it's a 20 unit, like the one that I bought a year and a half ago in New York, you're not buying a property that is 20 times more work than a single family residence short-term rental. Now, let me be honest, it's definitely more work than a single short-term rental, but it's not 20 times the amount of work. In theory, you could argue that the hotel that I bought is 20 times the amount of work, but mostly because we've been doing a gut job renovation on that property for the last year and a half. Let's assume you're not doing that. It might be three or four or even five times the amount of work to run a 20 unit motel or hotel, but that's still so much more scalable than one single home. Also, hotels are commercial real estate, and this is where things start to get really juicy for your net worth and for the amount of money that you can actually make in the real estate game. See, when you buy commercial real estate like a hotel, the metric are very different for how you measure how much that property is worth. With a single family residence, as I mentioned, the income that that property makes does not affect the market value of that property. What affects the market value of that property are comparable properties that have sold in the area for the last six months or so. So if all the four, three homes in the neighborhood have sold for $500,000 over the last six months, well, guess what? For the most part, your four, three property in that neighborhood is also gonna be worth $500,000. Doesn't matter if it makes 100, 200, or $300,000 a year. Now you get into commercial real estate and the tangible real estate itself is not what makes that property valuable. It's really based more on the NOI or the net operating income of that property. Now I'm gonna to try to keep this as simple as possible, but what I want you to understand is that the more you increase the net operating income, the more valuable the property gets. And I know that sounds relatively obvious, but usually the increase in value is pretty exponential for every dollar of profitability that you can add to that business. But how does one actually do that? There are a multitude of ways from a renovation where you make the property way nicer and as a result, you can increase your ADR, your average daily rate. Maybe you work on the pricing strategy. Maybe you market the property a lot better. Maybe you find other income sources on the property through upcharges and upsells, vending machines, coin operated laundry, whatever it is. And this is the game that all real estate investors play because now the investor that they're selling it to is also trying to find ways to add value to that property, AKA revenue, so that whenever they sell it, they can make money on it too. Too, which is why the best commercial real estate investors are mega, 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 mega wealthy. And many of them billionaires. Now I really have no intent on being a billionaire. That is not a goal of mine. It's not a dream. And I really don't want to even come close to that. But I don't mind the idea of building a significant net worth through commercial real estate. And I'm just not going to be able to do that buying one-off Airbnbs. And that's okay. It doesn't mean I don't like Airbnbs. I still love them. I'm still going to be buying them more so for the creative fulfillment of running a short-term rental business. But I am going to be getting into the hotel space and I've ragged on hotels so many times on my channel, not because I hate the concept of a hotel, it's because I think most hotels are boring. So if I do my creative thing that I do on the Airbnb side and create a really unique design forward hotel, well guess what? That pretty much checks all the same boxes for me as short term rentals do, except I make way more money as a result. Sue me. Okay, well, Airbnb overall looked pretty good. And now I'm off to have lunch with fellow YouTuber Shelby Church and John Herr, who's one of my coaches in Creative Camp, who's always locking down creative finance deals. Like and subscribe, Thank do you. it. How many bones did you make this month, Otto? Oh. What's oh, up, bro? What's going on? Are you gonna buy a hotel? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Let's get like three. <laughs> all right, let's go take a look. I'm all about odd numbers. 
So I'm having a just a random conversation with my friend Evan here. And how many doors do you do? How many how many uh, units total do you operate as a short term rental? So right now we're about at 170. 170, and then it's like 50 50 co hosting and arbitrage. I wish not yet. Not yet. So okay. it's still about I'd say 60 40. Uh, 60 on the rental arbitrage, 40 on the management side. Yeah. So you're, you're doing all right then? Yeah, we're doing good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're doing good. Yeah, we're doing good. <laughs> Big fan, man. Nice oh, yeah. To meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Hey, Clint. Evan. 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 We're going to go look at some stuff. Let's go look at a hotel. Yeah. I'm not allowed to show it though because uh, Evan's very competitive and secretive. Well, so the one we're touring today, the background on this is another operator was in place. The owner converted it. It used to be bathrooms down the hall. Now each room has a bathroom and the previous tenant locked it up during COVID at a very low rate. So the owner hasn't been able to experience the NOI. The tenant has, right? So the NOI has been capped for the last three or four years. The tenant is leaving. So we have an opportunity to take this building to make it cash flow a million a year and take the value of the building from 7 million to 11 million just by changing the revenue. So this right now, completely underutilized. It's crazy. Yeah. Guys, you can make so much money right here. You could have a little coffee shop, you could have bagels, you could have things that you sell. And if you just make an extra, what, like 500 bucks a week doing that, that's $2,000 a month. That right there, straight to the bottom line, baby, which increases you know, on a five cap. What does $2,000 a month add to your valuation? It's $24,000 uh, yeah. a year. If you can make $2,000 more a month yeah. profit, right. you've increased the value of this half a million dollars. That's right. At a five cap, at a, which is like that, the juiciest cap to be at. But um, I don't know, what are hotels even trading for in this area? Uh, probably around six. Yeah, and remember, this is newly renovated too, right? So this was all done in 2020, 2021. Nothing has been this new and this nice that's even been sold. Yeah, Nothing's for sale like this. Okay, so there's no elevator. No elevator. <sighs> I winded. It's very yeah, yeah. narrow in here. I'm feeling claustrophobic. This feels like the greatest liability I've ever seen in any. Oh yeah, we gotta bring that up. <laughs> for sure. Oh my god. Yeah. This is a whole straight. This is very nice. I wish there's more ways to monetize this, but I do like that you can like come and hang out or whatever. Maybe you could rent it out. Event space. Yeah. yeah event space. One thing that I'm surprised that they don't have is any covered space at all like they don't have mm. a pergola they don't mm. have anything yeah you could do a trellis with some yeah, i think if you had a trellis here. and you actually yeah. like worked on the vibe and your photos showcase yeah. like oh people are hanging out they're having right. drinks out here right yeah man there's a lot of potential for sure maybe not from like a there. monetizing standpoint but being able to just overall boost adr absolutely we just talked through this whole hotel deal now i got a wedding got to get a quick haircut so i looked fresh and then i got some thinking to do if we're gonna buy this damn thing mm.